An eye for an eye, leaves the whole world blind. But in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man, is king. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, we start with a story that's downright Machiavellian. The gentleman who has cheated on, deliberately created a rift of a lifetime, in the closest relationship that his cheating girlfriend had. Followed by a story about a cheating fiancé, who is terrified of clowns. After his fiancé founds out about his cheating, she makes sure to organize a farewell party. But make sure to invite Pennywise and his friends. Lastly, a story that has it all, a kick-ass surprise party, loving family members, momentum build up till the epic moment of surprise, cheating, and cake. If you like this type of content, invite the like button to play hide and seek, emphasize that it should bring their A-game, since we're grown-ups, and to make it more fun and challenging. After counting, just take a power nap. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. This story is about one of my college buddies pro revenge on his cheating girlfriend of two years, Cindy. He was planning on marrying her, have kids and the white picket fence, the whole shabam. He found out that she was cheating on him and he was literally crying in his car for a few days. He didn't tell her he knew, he told her that he was going to his parents' house for a few days to help them with some repairs. Instead, he hung out with us and cried, literally cried in front of his buddies, for a couple of days. We helped him get out of it. He eventually sobered up, but in return, showed hateful determination in his eyes. He told us he was going to destroy her. I didn't even understand it at the time. But looking back, it makes sense now. He was headed to a famous law school and was thinking way ahead of us. He nicely boxed all her items from his apartment and put them in his car. He then drove to Cindy's mother's house, over an hour outside of town. Cindy's mom and him had met several times, he had gone to their Thanksgiving and other family meetings. When he arrived and approached her mom, he told her he wanted to leave her stuff there for Cindy. Her mom was confused. Okay, but why? Not suspecting anything was wrong. He said something brief like, I don't think we'll be seeing each other again, but I needed to get this box back to her. But thank you for everything you've done for me. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Her mom is stunned and tries to ask why and how, but my friend just starts crying, I don't think intentionally, runs off and drives away. He never broke up with Cindy. Never even contacted her. She heard about it from her mom, who called her immediately, and he received confused and angry texts from the now ex on his drive home. A little while later, at least a couple of weeks, he gets an email from Cindy's mom. I don't remember the specifics, but it was not to apologize for her daughter, but more like, I hope you find a woman, who loves you unconditionally. Or something to that effect. He responded with, Thanks, your words mean a lot to me and saying nothing negative about Cindy. Dude is now a up-and-coming lawyer, and still gets texts from the ex saying she constantly hears from her mom, how she ruined it with the one good guy she had and how she doesn't deserve to be happy. He never responded to one text, and blocked her from Facebook. Of course, this was all planned. He wanted the hurt to come from someone who would stay in her life, not from someone who would be quickly forgotten. He deliberately created a rift in the closest relationship that two women can have and all in a friendly 60-second conversation. With no harsh words or accusations. Beware, the anger of a gentleman. The following part is included by the actual guy from the story. Hey all, I am the guy in the story. Can't say I'm thrilled to see it here. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't. But I can answer any questions you might have. To start, I'm not a genius. I have strong communication skills and strong interpersonal skills. I didn't ace my LSAT though, but it wasn't too hard to accomplish in the end. My ex's mother had a very proper way of conducting herself, and was extremely disappointed in hearing that her daughter had cheated on me. She had already started to see me as her son-in-law. She didn't discover the cheating, I told her at her doorstep, but not in many words. But by saying that I had really wanted it to work out, and I really appreciated the warmth she had shown me since my own parents lived far away. The crying was absolutely intentional and designed to be part of communicating to her, without using the words, that her daughter had cheated on me. I would absolutely not say that this incident destroyed a mother-daughter relationship. But it damaged it to the point that I regret having taken such a vengeful approach. I did send my ex a text message saying that our relationship was overdue to her infidelity. 
I did not ghost her, as I wanted her to know that the blame was solely hers. The following story is told from the female perspective. A while back, I was engaged to a guy who seemed like a good choice. Attractive, funny, good job, owned a home. But I learned he had a bit of a downside though, he was a cheating slimeball motherfucker. Not just a one-time one-night stand after too much to drink, which I would have still been angry about but could have probably gotten over. But repeatedly with more than one woman. I picked up on a few cues, but eventually had things confirmed beyond a shadow of a doubt. I was venting to my brother about this, and told him about how I planned to move out, while the ass butt was out on a week-long business trip. He volunteered to help me before I asked. And then got this amazing devious grin on his face. He told me. We can also leave a memento for him. When I asked what he meant, he said. Pennywise and his friends. You see, the pickle dipper, was scared of clowns. Not just a little uncomfortable, but fucking terrified of them. Even as a grown man, a clown on a TV show, web comic, or book, would freak him out and he'd have to change the channel or look away. My brother owns a print shop and is protective of his little sister. So in the couple of weeks leading up to Ass Butt's trip, he printed off a dozen's pictures of clowns in various sizes. Ranging from really small wallet-sized ones to big poster-sized prints. We framed most of the stuff in some super cheap plastic frames, others we laminated. We managed to move all of my stuff out pretty quickly, which gave us a lot of time to get things set up for my ex. We took down every single framed picture and put up framed clown pictures. The clowns ranged from average clown to nightmare fuel hell spawn. Pictures on the walls, art prints, photographs and frames on tables. You name it, it was replaced with a clown picture. Where we became really devious, was taking the laminated ones and placing them in things like the silverware drawer, the underside of the toilet lid, so when he went to take a leak, he'd be greeted with this when he lifted the seat. We also placed them in the fridge and freezer, on the back of cleaning bottles, in his underwear drawer, and a bunch of other places. We even made sure to put some in places that he wouldn't go into for a while, so he'd get a scare months later. He had one of those attic accesses that you have to pull down on and a ladder descends. We put a big laminated clown face on there, so when the ladder flipped open for him to climb, he'd get a clown face. While we were setting this up, I went a step further and changed the wallpaper on his desktop computer to a clown. I also took about 10 of his favorite movies that he had on DVD and replaced them with DVDs that had clown footage. They auto-played, and we'd printed up labels that looked like the original DVD artwork. We put all of his original artwork and DVDs in the basement, off the ground and protected from damage. But they were surrounded by giant clown posters of Pennywise and the like. And a motion sensor that, when triggered, would play a creepy clown laugh. I left a note on the kitchen table that said. I know about the girl you cheated on me with. Fuck you. I'm out. After a few days of hard work of moving me out and moving a few clown cars worth of terror in, my brother, his wife and I celebrated by grilling some steaks and having a few beers. These were paid for by the engagement ring I sold. Once my cheating ex returned, I got a text message or two that was along the lines of, you skank. It must have taken him days to take care of the photos out in the open alone. There was never any further action or legal repercussion for what we'd done. After all, what grown man would want to say that his ex fiance scared him, with clown pictures? <laughs> was told you guys would get a kick out of this, and was suggested I'd share it with you. So here it is. Gather round boys and girls, because it's time for the story of my cheating ex-wife, and how I even the score. Now bear with me, as this is a bit of a long one but two tears in a bucket, so fuck it. I had a feeling she was cheating as she set off a lot of red flags. Constantly laughing and smiling when texting, saying it was just her mother when I asked. Needing to stay late every night after work. When I'd call in, her co-workers would tell me she left hours ago. When I asked her what was going on, she'd laugh it off and say it was just something they did to each other at the office all the time. The last straw to where I knew something was definitely up, was when she went out to get milk at 11.30 at night and didn't come back, till 2 in the morning. Now if there is any words of wisdom I can pass on to others in all my years of experience, it's if you think your significant other is cheating, hire a private investigator. They're goddamn good at what they do and they will get some evidence that really helps in the later divorce. Fast track to her birthday, several months down the road. Now I know what you're thinking, why the hell did I wait months before I confronted her and did it really need to be on her birthday? The answer to the first question, 
I want as much evidence as possible to hand off to my lawyer as well as make arrangements to find a new place to live, etc. Answer to your second question, of course it had to be on her birthday. You see, after asking her what she wanted to do on her birthday this year, she rather insisted on me going out of town with my friends, as she just had to work anyways and didn't want to be reminded she was aging. So I know something is up and after finding a bottle of champagne and two glasses hidden in my closet. Something in me snaps. So I do what any sensible man would have done. I leave and go to my friend's house pretending like I'm going out of town. While there I call up her mother, father, sister and several of her friends. I tell them how I want to give her a big surprise by sneaking into her room with party streamers, kazoos and a big cake with candles. Sounds fun right? Well boy was it. It's 8.30 in the morning and I have everyone meet just outside our apartment. We all pile in the elevator, about 8 of us in total, her mother holding the cake and me reminding everyone to be as quiet as they can be. I put my key in and unlock the door, we all sneak in and make our way down the hall towards the bedroom. Each hold a kazoo and mom holding the cake grinning from ear to ear. So I throw open the door and we all yell surprise. But the surprise was on us. And there was my wife, bent over in doggy style position with her lover, staring at us wide-eyed, mid-thrust. Mom drops the cake, sister screams, father begins to shout. I pretend like I'm horrified, to which her friends try to push everyone out while yelling at her. Wife, excuse me, ex-wife is sobbing and screaming how could I, while the lover is desperately trying to put his pants on while running out of the place. Needless to say, it was one of the best birthday presents I have ever given. Well to be honest, it was funny as hell at first. I tried to disguise my laughing by pretending I was choking up. After so long of being betrayed, I was the one who got to have the last laugh. Plus, since I had hired the private investigator, I was able to prove she was using my money to pay for things for her lover, hotels, dinners, etc. So I did get some compensation for that. Though, she still did get half of my life savings, but I was young and just starting out, so the amount I had then is pretty laughable now. But then reality sets in. Your marriage is over. The woman you fell in love with has betrayed you and the last two years of your life were a bit of a waste. In the end it's not even about the money. I really thought I loved this girl, why didn't she love me? For the longest time I wondered what was wrong with me and if anyone would truly be able to love me. Not to mention I was really close to her dad. Mine left when I was younger and I never spoke to him since then, so hers kind of took me under her wing. Kind of the father I never had. I still call him from time to time, share with him my accomplishments as they come and even stop by to see him when I get a chance. Divorce is never fun boys and girls and take my advice. When you're young and in love, don't be foolish and run into something. Take some time to really get to know the other person. Wait 3 to 5 years. Move in together. I wish someone had just pulled me aside and said, man, think about what you're doing. Maybe you should give it some time. Also another piece of advice. The old saying about, you know how a girl really is, by how she treats her parents? This is absolutely true. She was really mean to her parents, that should have been my first red flag. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.